this is a keyboard, this is a mouse, you already knew that. But what you didn't know is it's for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, you can hook it up to an Xbox or a PS4 and even a PC, but why would you do that? I'm sure you already have a mouse and keyboard for your PC and even if you didn't, I don't recommend spending $130 on a mouse and keyboard just for hooking it up with your PC. No, 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 Nintendo Switch you say. Okay, now we're talking. Nintendo Switch keyboard and mouse for $130. That sounds a lot better. Now that we're on the same page, let me formally introduce you to this little device. It's the VX2 Aim Switch Wireless Mouse and Keyboard by GameSir. When you see that, you immediately think Fortnite. Oh, I'm gonna own those people on Fortnite. Maybe you think you're gonna have an advantage with the keyboard and mouse, or maybe you don't even care about Fortnite and you're thinking other first person shooters. But there's only a few on the Nintendo Switch that are even worth playing. Uh, maybe Warface, you got Doom, there's the Metro games. And I know there's Borderlands coming out as well as Bioshock. Those are older games, but nonetheless, some great first person shooters. What about first party Nintendo games? The two that come to mind are Splatoon 2, which is probably the best shooter on the Nintendo Switch. You might be able to play Mario Odyssey with this thing, but what really intrigues me is Zelda Breath of the Wild. And that's because there's a bow, you can use a bow in the game. So how exactly does that work? Well, I can tell you that it actually works pretty nicely. While playing with a mouse and a keyboard, I found myself exclusively using the bow. It, it just felt so natural. So those are the reasons why you might pick this device up. If you're still with me, that means you might be interested. So the next thing you want to know is what you get for your 130 US dollars and how does this thing work? How do you actually set it up? Well, that's what we're going to go through in the rest of the video. Here's the box. It's definitely packaged like it's $130 price tag. And keep in mind, this thing is wireless and it does have a built-in rechargeable lithium ion battery. So those features right there justify some of that price tag. We open this up and right on top is the keyboard. And the build quality of this is actually fairly decent. I like this joystick on the bottom left. This actually represents the D-pad on your Nintendo Switch. It's a new feature on the VX2. This is something that was not on the VX1. Up next is a thank you note from GameSir. Uh, it's a nice touch considering you are paying a pretty good premium for this product. Up next are the setup instructions for the Nintendo Switch. These are actually fairly fairly straightforward. One thing they should have included is the mapping of the keys. So which key is the A button, the Y button? I mean, the left trigger, right trigger are straightforward. You know, those are going to be on the mouse. But what about the rest of the buttons? I did struggle with this a little bit to figure everything out. And just so you don't have to live through that pain. So if you do pick this thing up, up on the screen right now is a complete key map telling you exactly which button represents which one on your Nintendo Switch some stickers here of course is the mouse the build quality of the mouse itself the wiring does feel pretty good up next is the wireless transmitter and we have a USB A to a USB C adapter. The last thing is a USB cable. This you can use to charge the keyboard. Now it doesn't include an AC adapter. So you have to either purchase one or use one that's lying around in your house. But of course you can also charge it using any USB input, including the one on your Nintendo switch. That's everything. And the setup is fairly straightforward. The mouse plugs into the right side of the keyboard. The wireless transmitter plugs into your your Nintendo Switch. If you're playing on your TV, you plug it directly into the dock using a USB. And if you want to play in portable mode, well, that's what this adapter is for. And then you can plug it into the USB-C port on the Nintendo Switch. Also go into your system settings and turn on Pro Controller Wired Communication. You turn on the keyboard and it should be ready to go. It does take a bit of time to get used to everything. The key map that I showed earlier, maybe print that out and that should help speed things up. 
Now my final thoughts and review of this product. It is a little expensive, $130 US. I mean, you can buy two pro controllers for that price. Now the build quality, the ergonomic design, the wireless capabilities, the built-in rechargeable battery are nice little features. The response time, the feel of the actual keyboard is really good. I really like this joystick on the bottom here. The one problem is that all the key maps are fixed, so you can't really change things around. I wish there was a way to do that, so some of these keys aren't actually useless. The mouse, that's what's really interesting. Uh, the performance, I think it's adequate when playing Fortnite, uh, the response time, I think it was adequate, it wasn't all that bad, uh, but I will say don't expect to get the same performance as a PC. If you're a competitor gamer, you're not going to be satisfied here, but if you're more laid back, casual gamer, want to mess with this thing on, you know, Zelda Breath of the Wild or Splatoon 2, and I don't know, you can probably even play any of the Mario games with this, then I, I, I think it's a neat little device. It, it does work. It does work and it works well enough. If I was to give this a score, I would probably say uh, 4 out of 5. By no means, it's not a perfect device, but if you can go past the $130 price tag and it's not a concern for you, then I, I think you'll be happy with your purchase. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching. If you actually stuck around for this long, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this. You know, is it something you would actually consider purchasing for $130? What would you rather have, this keyboard and mouse or two pro controllers?